What's going on everyone? Collector Crow here. Today we're going to take a look at my June manga haul for 2021. So stay tuned. So June was a bit of a slow month for me as far as manga. That's a lie. I went over to Alabama, bought a bunch of manga there in some used bookstores. <laughs> So that video is coming up soon, but as far as what I ordered off of my usual sites, getting new manga, it was slow. I don't think I actually placed an order in June except for maybe one tack on to a comic book order. A lot of this was because I knew Right Stuff Anime was having their birthday sale in July, and so I wanted to wait because I knew I'd be spending a good chunk of cash with that. So this video's haul is pretty much just going to be a hodgepodge of uh, different orders that I've gotten from Right Stuff Anime and In Stock Trades that have just sent me out little pieces of my orders here and there. So, let's get into it. So this time we only have two boxes, or that's four, two boxes of manga. One from Right Stuff Anime and one from In Stock Trades. And now we also do have one additional volume that came with a big comic haul from In Stock Trades, so I'm going to count that separately, but it's not a huge haul this time. It's mostly back order uh, older stuff, so it's not going to be a lot of new titles this time around. Just new in the sense that they aren't used. So anyway, I'm going to do the right stuff box first, and the package actually already came open, so I don't think that's a right stuff issue. It was more a postal service issue. The first thing we have actually is the second volume of ZOM 100. So if you watched my video on ZOM 100, I am super stoked for this. I uh, was really loving what I saw of this series in the first volume. Had a great mix of comedy, seriousness, and just overall fun characters. So really excited to read this very soon. And following that up, I actually have a new manga called Boys Run the Riot. So I know this has to deal with like transgender issues and stuff. And when done well, that's something that I really do enjoy reading. Apparently it's about a kid opening up to someone about being transgender and it's someone that uh, he's not really actually all that close to in the first place. So it's just about uh, the relationship that's built up by that and hopefully learning to accept oneself. I'm going to find out when I read it. So this is something that I really am looking forward to uh, reading when I get the chance to sit down. And look at that gloss on the cover. That is, that is nice. We've got a stray volume of Black Lagoon. Uh, I figured I'd go ahead and pick a little bit more of these up. I think I ordered a couple of volumes. I've had the first two volumes for a while and kind of had it on hiatus. Uh, so it was kind of like Blue Exorcist in that I just had put it on pause. But I still want to get the volumes and I think they are getting a little bit hard to find. But I did enjoy uh, what I read and watched of Black Lagoon. So that's why I wanted to get those volumes while I can. Next up we have a little bit of a slightly damaged volume of My Hero Academia, volume 28. And so I'm actually missing volume 27, right? Stuff has not shipped that to me yet. So I'm kind of stuck right now where I can't actually read anything else. So yeah, about to enter the Liberation War arc and I'm stuck, can't do it, maybe one day. So the next volume I have is Gigant, volume five. I'm not gonna flip it over because there's some nudity on the back. And YouTube probably wouldn't like that, which is the same reason I'm not taking off this foil. But uh, I liked what I read of Gigant. It's just another one that the releases were coming out slow at the beginning. So I just decided to put it on pause until, really until it finishes, because I know it's at its climax in Japan. It's probably going to end around 10 volumes or so. So I'm just going to wait for those to come out here and then read them all in one go, because it's a pretty quick read. And I just don't want to forget what I've read. But I did like what I read in the first volume of this. It's about this woman here who has the power to uh, grow gigantic. And I believe it turns into her fighting like aliens or other giant beings or something. I didn't quite get that far, but it's a Hiroya Oku work. So, you know, Gantz and that kind of stuff. It sometimes gets a little weird and it's no exception with this story, but I was enjoying it. It's definitely not for everyone though. And you have to be able to tolerate some pretty obscene levels of nudity in that one. And the last two volumes for Right Stuff are just two volumes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist, volume 9 and 13. Just slowly still filling out my Yu-Gi-Oh! collection, and these are really nice for being so old. 
just working on completing my Yu-Gi-Oh set. Again, hoping one day we'll get the complete editions that have those alternate covers from Japan, but I'm not really holding my breath on that, kind of like I'm not for Zatch Bell. And that brings us to our first in-stock trades order. So uh, I'm gonna see how in-stock trades does with packaging. This order did take almost two months to get to me. I ordered it, I think, at the beginning of April and it didn't ship until like the very um, end of May or May. It might have even been in June when it shipped. I think it was now that I think about that. So if it's kind of like right stuff, if you're okay with longer waiting times, um, in stock trades is pretty good as a choice for that. And I will say something nice about in stock trades is a few items I ordered ended up being out of stock because I primarily was looking on there for harder to find manga. And what they do is if you order something they don't have any remaining stock of, they actually email you and ask you if you'd like to replace it with something else or if you just want to remove it from your cart. So if there was something else you were on the fence about and want to just substitute the item and then you know cover the extra cost or get a little bit of a discount with it, then you can do that, but you are responsible for the difference in the price. It's just nice that you don't then have to go back and create a whole new order in case there was something you were kind of debating between and then one of them didn't end up being available. Okay, so the packing slip has been removed. And as you can see, there's a nice bit of bubble wrap here. That's not the flimsy kind either. It's nice and sturdy. It would be nice if there was a little bit more, but I mean, that's, that's pretty secure, really. You got a whole layer around it. It's actually not bad, and it? I don't know if this is actually more eco-friendly than the way Right Stuff does it with the cardboard wrap or not, but oh, and they're all actually sealed up together. So, okay, okay. Well, you kind of already saw what a couple of them are, so let's just get right into them. All right, so yeah, first off, we do have this volume of Yu-Gi-Oh! Millennium World. Again, just adding more to my Yu-Gi-Oh! collection here. I'm going to soft to the side so I have more room. Uh, this is towards the end of the series, the final arc of the original canon Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff that was actually by Kazuki Takahashi. So, yeah, more to that, and there's another volume as well in there. Before that, we will get to Ubel Blot Volume 9. So... As you know from a previous haul, I was collecting the Ubel Blots. I am missing one of the early ones still, so I'm stuck on that as well. Can't get too far into it, but I know these are coming increasingly hard to find, so I do succumb to FOMO a good bit, fear of missing out. So unfortunately, that's just a really bad habit of mine, but I am going to uh, get into this when I get some time. And as I keep saying, when I get more settled with all my manga in one place, instead of being strewn like a third here, a third here, and a third here, because that's really hindered me from being able to actually read a lot of my pickups over the past couple of years. Next up, speaking of um, ones that I was collecting in the past, we have another Umi Neko volume. This is Requiem of the Golden Witch Volume 2, or number 17 overall. So it's a real chunker. Um, just for comparison, here's the Ubel Blot. And here's the Yu-Gi-Oh! volume, so yeah, that's it's real chunky. But uh, again, something I just really can't get into at the moment because it's so hard to find those earlier volumes and really the later volumes too, so I'm piecing this together very slowly. Part of a three-volume series Toyo game, this was one I had actually ordered volumes two and three to complete the series off of in stock trades, but they ended up not having the volume three anymore. It happened with, uh, I think, another Umi Neko and some Higarashi as well. But it's a death game series, and I sometimes like those, sometimes end up being annoyed by them. But um, I do have volume one, and I'm going to read it in volume two, as long as I can find volume three, because I don't want to start on such a short series and then not be able to find volume three and forget everything. So that's uh, the trap of manga, unfortunately. And so for the second set, we actually have all of it is just Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> except for one volume of Higurashi. So, for Millennium World, we have uh, Volume 7, Volume 4 of Yu-Gi-Oh! R, which is the kind of non-canon addition to uh, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series. It still might have the card inside, that's cool. Hold on, we're going to find out real quick. I don't even know what was packaged in here, but sometimes from the ones I got from Right Stuff as well, they would still have like the original card in it, which was really blowing my mind that it, for so long, they had a first edition print. I 
think those were only first edition for the original series anyway. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, can we just drop a card in here? We do! It's Angel 07, so I'm not going to take it out, but it's <laughs> still pretty cool that I can order this that was printed so long ago, and it still has a card in it, so that's awesome. We have Volume 22 of Duelist. Volume 23 of Duelist. And then Volumes 21 and 24 of Duelist, which I think covers like part of the Battle City arc. And then for our one volume of Higurashi, we have uh, Volume 10, which is Volume 2 of the Beyond Midnight arc. So again, want to get into this horror series, but just kind of have to wait my turn. And then from our one remaining volume from that other in stock trades hall that was mostly comics, we have Volume 10 of Taboo Tattoo. So that is the last volume that I was missing from this series, and I can hopefully actually read it now because it's been on my mind for a long, long time before it even got announced in English. It was something that was on my radar. So looking forward to reading this. I've heard mixed things, but I'm excited all the same. From what I know about just the little bit that I read early on, it involves people who get spell crests, and apparently the U.S. Army gets involved wanting to collect like the spell crests from all these users and turn them into weapons to use against uh, other powers in the world. So, uh, kind of interesting concept and hopefully it pulls it off well. That's all for the manga haul this time, but stay tuned because there's going to be a lot coming next month. As long as Right Stuff ships my orders, that is. See you next time.